creepy and cool TikToks that will blow your mind. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! Disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research, as these clips haven't been fact-checked. Al Capone invented something that you use every day. If you don't know who Al Capone is, he's arguably one of the most famous Italian mob bosses to ever live. And way back in the day, Big Al was known most for his illegal production of alcohol during Prohibition. Al was making stupid amounts of money from selling illegal alcohol. But when Prohibition ended, Al said, I don't want to do this illegal stuff anymore. I want to be a good upstanding citizen. Let's go for a legitimate business. So at this point, Al already had a bunch of places for his alcohol manufacturing set up. So there was really only one way that he could go with this. And this was the milk industry. And this is because when Al was trying to pivot his business model, he thought to himself, hey, Al, people drink milk every single day. <laughs> and also the profit margins are higher than that with alcohol. And thus, Al got into the milk business. But one day, one of Al's family members got sick from drinking his milk. And of course, the logical reason behind this is because the milk is bad. So Al said, I don't want anyone else to get sick from drinking my milk, so we're gonna put expiration dates on all of our bottles. Just so people know whether they should be drinking milk or if they could get sick from it. And thus, expiration dates were born from an Italian mob. Pasteurization was invented by Pasteur. But Capone introduced it to industry and set expiration date. There's a country we don't know about. What are you talking about? Buddy, what if I told you there's an entire part of the world we don't know about? People still believe that the Earth is a spherical shape, that we can walk from one point to another on and end up back in the same spot. Well, when you make it all the way through Antarctica, give me a call and let me know, because it's never been done before. You all have literally zero idea what lies beyond Antarctica but just arrogantly assume it wraps around to the other side like a bunch of incompetent sheep. And you'll never know because they won't allow you to go there. The reality is that it's not simply a landmass on the bottom of a globe, but rather it's a, a frozen landmass that circles around our entire observable seven continents. Uh, they prevent you from knowing this by preventing you from doing the one thing that would prove it going all the way through Antarctica. But what's even more interesting is what lies beyond it. Outside of this ice wall, Zeus uh, is an entirely other world we've never seen. Massive continents and um, oceans owned and inhabited by the families that uh, control us inside this little section of the world that we can't see outside of. We're just their little science project. Okay, the question is, why is Antarctica forbidden to go? Something interesting about it. This is AI, all right? Everyone knows. You have also stated in previous interviews that American soldiers' body parts began showing up at the base gate in trash bags. Let's start with the trash bags. What hurts me the most about the trash bags probably happened a couple years ago. talking to one of the spouses whose body parts were in that trash bag. And she can't use trash bags. She just can't use trash bags anymore to think of that. I don't know what the delivery was for. I don't know if it was to give them back and that's just the only way to do it after they hacked them apart. I mean, that's sad when you, that's how you identify people is in body parts Ooh. and trash bags delivered to your front gate. I think the body parts were from uh, probably part Gary Gordon and Randy Shugart and maybe one of the crew chiefs. Look at his pain. He sacrifices on real respect. Beautiful. Gorgeous. One day I will visit. I'll take my mother too. Hey, what kind of changed beer for me? I'm not a big beer drinker, but I went to this dude's house. All his beer was in a fridge set at like 34, mm. 33 or something. The, the dedicated was, beverage <laughs> fridge is one of the, like, so cold. In the world. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah, almost yeah, frozen. Yeah, yeah. That That's was awesome. Like, man. You know the hotel across the street from CAA? Next door to where they shot Die Hard, the Takamimi oh, Towers nice, or whatever. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, there's a Yakutomi Plaza. Yakutomi Plaza. Yeah. Plaza. <laughs> there's a hotel there and the bar. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm to get hard. <laughs> the Intercontinental. It, and the bar has frosted mm. taps. The taps are covered in ice. Oh, and nice. I... Cannot. I had to leave CAA. <laughs> I had to leave CAA. No job. I went. I left that. I left my meeting there. I went over to that bar. 
and I had like six beers. I left my car at CA and had to Uber home. And I was like, I can't work with these people. <laughs> I can't work with them. They're fucking killing me. I heard that the, you know, frosty taps are stock standard in any bar in Australia. Any Australian can confirm what I said? Drop a comment, please. This is the prison of the future where criminals would serve their entire sentence in less than two minutes. It's called Cognify and it's meant to revolutionize the criminal justice system by using a device to synthetically implant AI generated memories into the prisoner's brain. You see, the current prison system has a major problem. Many studies have shown that chucking a criminal into a cell does not reduce the likelihood of that person reoffending. So realistically, the only way that we're currently reducing crime is by keeping these people off the streets. Problem is, taxpayers are paying up to $3 million for just one prisoner's life sentence. That's why scientist Hashim Al-Gaili came up with Cognify. Because one day, prisoners could choose to fast track their rehabilitation. Firstly, the implant would target specific parts of the brain responsible for reasoning, memory, and logical thinking. The intensity and type of memories can then be adjusted depending on the crime. For example, violent offenders could relive their crime from their victim's perspective, feeling all of the pain, suffering, and trauma as if it was real and it was done to them. They could also experience certain memories designed to trigger empathy, remorse, and regret, which is a crucial part of rehabilitation. Inside the criminal's mind, time would also pass differently. 60 seconds in the real world could feel like 20 years for them. Hashim argues that by replacing mm. long prison sentences with brief intensive rehabilitation with Cognify, not only would you avoid the high cost of housing millions of inmates, but by actually rehabilitating offenders effectively, they could be reintegrated back into society sooner and contribute to the workforce. So the question is, do you think that this is a good idea or is the current prison system better? So in my country, we get imprisoned for stealing chicken. So do I become the chicken and feel the fear of the chicken being stolen? this common in Calgary? Anyone from Calgary here? Gorgeous. Norway is mine. I need that. To be able to interact with a lion in such a manner requires gifted hands. I pretty much dedicated my life to looking for UFOs and I'd consider myself an expert. I usually put six hours a night in, watching the sky from 1 a.m. till sunrise. I've seen daytime objects, I've seen objects at nighttime on night vision. The night vision I have is third generation night vision goggles. The military used to use them. They're the best for filming the night sky. Okay. <laughs> if you put in the time and effort, you will see something. 
On January 25th, 2023, at 3.24 a.m., I was outside doing a sky watch in my backyard. I was filming these two bright gold-colored objects traveling from left to right across the sky and seemed to be flying around uh, 40,000 feet in altitude and moving three, four times faster than commercial flights. And then uh, something gets ejected out of one of them. It looked like a little Tic Tac object that just came out real quick and disappeared. I'm not sure what it was. I was tracking satellites and airplanes, and there were no satellites on my tracker when it happened, and there was no aircraft on my other tracker. I'm actually surprised I even got lucky enough to film something like that. He definitely seen something. The eyes never lie, Chico. Yo, what's the show called The Americans? It's basically this story. Coyote cacti contain a psychedelic compound called mescaline. Similar to LSD or magic mushrooms, mescaline produces altered states of consciousness and colorful hallucinations when ingested. Not only do scientists think psychedelics like mescaline can be beneficial in treating mental health issues, but indigenous peoples have used them to promote mental and spiritual healing for at least 5,000 years. Ooh. Peyote grow wild in a small region of North America, spreading across northern Mexico and southern Texas. Their unique chemical makeup, rich history, and beautiful appearance makes them common amongst hobby growers. Peyote do not require a lot of light and will grow very well indoors in a bright window or under a grow light. Once mature, peyote produce beautiful flowers, which then produce berries which contain fresh seeds. They are slow growers though, but this makes your first flower that much more exciting. They are also 100% legal to buy, sell, and cultivate in Canada. Mm. So how are they legal in Canada, but illegal in the States? Would they naturally grow? Not the city of love anymore, I'm afraid. The f did I just watch? I don't know how I'm going to sleep after watching this documentary. This documentary is about people who die and have no next to kin and how the coroner deals with them. And fair warning, they show everything in this documentary. From the beginning, I was not expecting it and it literally shows a guy on the toilet. If you love documentaries, make sure to hit follow because I post daily and you'll never miss out on what to watch. This whole film is haunting, unnerving, heartbreaking. The amount of people that just pass away without any loved ones around them are just left for the city to deal with and they have to try to find somebody to claim them is so heartbreaking. This made me feel like I really need to have children so that this doesn't happen to me. And it's so crazy to see the people who do this as a job. I'm sitting there with my jaw on the floor and these people are just wrapping them up and tossing them down the hallway. I guess you get used to seeing it, but it's just so astonishing. Typically, I show the trailer in the background when I make videos, but I can't even play the trailer in this because I would have to censor the whole thing. I'm sure some of you do this as a job, and I would love to hear about it in the comments. Have you seen the documentary Faces of Death? This was filmed in the 70s. It's pretty gruesome.
This area in London has the highest number of phone thefts. The number of phone thefts in London is increasing. Last year, over 40,000 phone thefts were reported in the capital. But according to a Met Police report, it's a bigger problem in some London boroughs than others. So here are the top five boroughs with the highest number of phone thefts, according to Metropolitan Police. By the way, it's not all bad news in the report. In some areas, such as Richmond, Sutton, and Kingston upon Thames, phone theft fell by around 25%. But in some other areas, it has gone up massively, such as Greenwich and Southwark. Number 5. Kensington and Chelsea. The richest area in London is also a hotspot for phone thieves. Number 4. Southwark. With so many tourist hotspots and new offices, no wonder phone theft in Southwark increased by 81% over the last year. Number 3. Camden. The number of phone thefts in Camden increased by 40%. Number 2. City of London. No surprise here. The City of London has the highest number of reported crimes per 10,000 people in the entire UK. Number 1. With an increase of 71% over the last year, the London Borough with the most phone thefts is Westminster. Wow, that's scary. Wonder what solutions the police have in place to reduce phone thefts. Plate gets two grilled hot dogs, two healthy scoops of sauerkraut, their caramelized hot onions, relish, two seedless hot cherry peppers. Then those two grilled hot dogs get sliced in the freaking meat Man. slicer. They slam it on the plate. They grab some fresh pastrami, slice that in the meat slicer, and pile it on top of those sliced hot dogs. A warmed up whole wheat wrap gets spread with their Russian dressing. It all slides right on there. They wrap it up way better than I ever could. Slice it up, and there you Ooh. have it. The secret menu devour heartburn wrap with a side of Russian dressing to dip for that perfect first bite. Cheers. This is from Lido Kosher Deli in Long Beach, New York. Love it. You guys need this. Send me one, please. My mouth is watering. Ever do this inside your house? If you want to keep your residence free from spirits and avoid a haunted life, never do these things. First, never use old clothes as floor rags. You know that stained shirt or some torn clothing you use to clean your house? Never do that as old, torn, and stained clothes are loaded with negative energies. Second, never talk to yourself in your house. Talking to yourself can attract spirits to our world. Third, never look in the mirror at dawn between 3 and 4 a.m. You can have hallucinations and see strange things. Fourth, never sleep with dirty dishes. This will attract obsessive spirits and entities to your house and your life. Fifth, do not invite just anyone into your house, as we do not know the energy that people carry, and someone may be envious of you, bringing negative energies into your home. Sixth, never sleep with a chair facing your bed, as you will be inviting spirits to watch you while you sleep. Get out of here. Seventh, do not sing at 3 a.m., as someone from beyond with a deep voice will accompany Whoa. you. Eighth, if you hear someone calling your name, Look back and see no one. Never say hello, as it may be a spirit pursuing you. Share this video, follow me, and give a like for more terrifying stories. None of this happened in my house because I sanctify my house every day with the blood of Christ. By forcing it out of the tissues. We didn't touch chemo. But by pushing it out of the tissues too rapidly with a castor oil, they got an overdose. Now we learned in a hurry because these patients ended up in intensive care for an overdose of chemo Ooh. that we never touch. So we learned never give a chemo patient with prior chemo, even if it's as much as six or eight years back, never give a patient castor oil who's had chemo. Reduce the therapy, and that's all in the book. Reduce the therapy. Give only three enemas instead of five a day. Give less juices, give less potassium, give less medication. Everything is reduced so that these patients are not overloaded and overly stimulated to release the poisons in a hurry. It's dangerous. Okay? But the castor oil for the non-chemo patients is extremely valuable. I'll give you another example. We had a lady who came to the hospital. She had been in New York 
at Sloan Kettering, and they opened her up, uh-oh, and closed her. I don't know where her cancer originated, but when they opened her, they found 92% of her liver had turned into malignant tumor tissue. 92%. They say you need at least one-third of your liver functioning to even survive. 92%, assuming 8%. Maybe there was a little more somewhere that they didn't find. But at any rate, she started on the therapy with the castor oil. And she got better. And about four or five months into the therapy, she called in and she wanted to have ongoing directions of what to do. And she talked, unfortunately, to one of the doctors who was not very experienced. By the way, can you see now how this separates? Wonderful juice and I appreciate it, thank you. <laughs> Mush. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so this lady, with 92% of her liver, she calls in around four and a half, five months later, and talks to this doctor, and he asks, well, how many uh, castor oil treatments are you doing? Oh, she says, one every other day. She never changed from her first intensive treatment. Oh, he says, that's too much at this point. After five months, you don't need that. Do two a month. Never reduce it from every other day to two a month. Bad mistake. Slowly help the body along. If the body now can manage on its own, fine, reduce it. If it can't, increase it again. This liver, which was so terribly damaged and probably had a lot of scar tissue and didn't have much function left, could not manage when she stopped the castor oil. And she slowly deteriorated. She didn't get more cancer. But the body was not able to deal with a normal detoxing, with a normal waste of the metabolism without the help of the castor oil because the liver was, there was too little liver tissue left. And she slowly worsened and got tireder and tireder and started to sleep more and have less energy. It wasn't necessary. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to understand the problem. In her case, 92% of the liver was tumor tissue. You can't do that. So that's where we are, and that's where we have to be able to understand and help the body along. Now, generally, the body will give you the signals. Normally, you're tired, you go to sleep. Normally, you're hungry, you eat. Normally, you're thirsty, you drink. You do that with the Gerson therapy. But the clock says not yet time for an enema. Makes no difference. If you're toxic, you're headachy, you're logy, you're not working right, the clock has nothing to do with it. Your body says now. If you like Barbara O'Neill, you love Charlotte Gerson, the real deal. Facts. Russia is Magog and China Gog. Yes. In the end times, watch out for these two. We're already seeing it. We're already there. When they start coming together, we know we're close. So we are indeed in the last days. Another political thing that happened about two days ago, there was a 10,000 people protest in Spain. Have you heard of it? Yes. All right. What do you know about it? So I saw this video where a lot of people are marching on yes. the streets and they're shouting against tourists, tourists com coming right. into their, right. that's all I know. They're pissed off. They are protesting in the streets of Barcelona and other cities in Spain because they don't want tourists anymore. They started going to restaurants, water spraying them with the water guns, harassing them physically, doing other things, asking them to leave. They tape the entrances yeah. of the hotels so they don't leave the hotel unless they're only going to the airport. They're actually trapped, bro. They're actually being held hostage, tourists by these protesters. What? Why? Because they don't want tourists anymore because tourists apparently are booming the house pricing. They are littering. All they do is party because of their economical impact. Um, impact. Everything in Spain 
has become more expensive. Yeah, and they go like, we go outside, there's no, there are no locals. Everybody's just a tourist. Nobody here speaks Spanish. No, I mean, we can't afford to live in our own country. And it's overcrowded. They're like, we don't even have a place to stay. I think that's just ignorant. I mean, isn't Dubai the same? I was literally going to say that. I was literally going to say that. I Where think have you seen Amaratis in Dubai, bro? Bro, uh, what's, there, what's, are, there are, there are, there are, but not everywhere. as many as far. What is the demographic split of the population? I think Emiratis. We are like about eleven percent of the whole popul the country's go. population, bro. I think it, it's more of from the government, from the leadership, the way the infrastructures are built. Spain is an old country, if I'm not mistaken. Bro, look at Al Khair Road right now. They are remaking the entire thing just to facilitate the traffic that we have now in the UAE within like we started talking about the traffic and before we could continue talking about the traffic there's a solution on ground happening yes. right there yes. I, right you know the bad thing about this is this protest is spreading all over Europe oh uh, not only so Spain started it two days ago now Amsterdam is doing it wow maybe people in if I'm not mistaken Italy Rome yeah I saw that it. okay now it's chaos they're not against a certain race it's just tourists just tourists right but look spanish people are honestly let me tell you why i looked at their gdp their gdp relies on six key factors tourism is the biggest one clothing and pharmaceuticals are next i mean yeah obviously clothing yeah. right i mean zara right that's yeah. it's supposed to be spanish if i'm not mistaken i don't know yeah but so they they, they produce mass amounts of clothing and pharmaceuticals mm. meaning medicine if one third of their economy key factor of GDP stops, then the whole country would crumble. Oh, not only prices would go down, currency is going to go down. Everybody's going to get paid less. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The country would actually crumble because if you just take all the tourists out of the country, Spain is going to be empty. If you take out all non Spanish people out, Spain is going to be empty because a lot of Spanish people are also not in Spain. You mm, see, mm. they are in England, US, the Middle East. Well, oh, just in Dubai, we have 200,000 Spanish speaking people. Bro. Wow. That's not a joke. Wow. You know, obviously some of them from the South America, yeah. you know, a lot of Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, uh, but we have tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of, of yeah. Spanish people just, just living here. I think it's ignorant, honestly. Come to Bali. We welcome you with open hands. But just don't be stupid. Remember, we still have that penalty and castration. It was a man who went by the name Earl John Brewer said that there was this cave that was in Utah held different artifacts from an ancient technologically advanced civilization in fact giants in this cave the natives called this cave the cave of the great spirit and then discovered all these ancient copper tablets that had weird inscriptions on them but people just started like okay John Brewer you're full of crap like yeah. tell us where this is he's like I won't because a couple years before that was a Lovelock cave in Instant, right and that's where the smithsonian came in yeah all of a sudden the bones disappeared in fact he told this man one day i was walking to the cave and all of a sudden there's three men standing and they said we want to show you our city <gasps> brought John Brewer to this underground city and John Brewer said it was the most technologically advanced civilization that he's ever seen. He says they were able to speak telepathically as well. He said then they just walked and then disappeared and then the entrance to their city disappeared too. But he brought the these copper tablets to at BYU, radiocarbon dated this bark. He said with a radiocarbon age of 5 BC to 390 BC is indeed a an ancient. And people are like, yo, you're full of crap. The sketchy shit happens at the White House. Because remember when you were talking about the blue roofs? Yeah. Everybody's saying it's AI. I don't think it's AI. Yeah. Because like the camera quality, everyone says behind it, the things are moving. But if you have someone that's trying to sneak and take a video, it's not going to be the best quality. Oh, so right. Joe Biden starts talking to some other guy, in, I think it's in the White House, about the blue roofs. Mm -hmm. and, and explain that blue roof theory again. So in Maui, when they had the lasers, right? The only houses and the only objects that didn't catch fire are were the blue. blue roof. Yeah. Because the lasers lasers for whatever reason wouldn't hit it and what is japan doing blue tarps over all yeah. the buildings okay yeah. look what he said about that no no he said we gotta change that that's wild yo anyways, that's crazy he said anyways we gotta change that
that. He That's knows. That's crazy. He knows. He knows. No. Yeah. So you know eels? We have no idea where they come from. Like, literally, we do not know how they reproduce. They tracked all larvae and demonstrated that they all came from one particular place in the ocean called the Sargasso Sea. But this is where the mystery gets deeper because while scientists think the eels are going off and reproducing and mating in the Sargasso Sea, no one can be quite sure because they sent off one expedition uh, where they scooped up as many eggs as they could find on the floor of the Sargasso Sea. They got 7,000 in total and they took them back to the lab and looked at them to see how many of those were eels. You want to guess how many of that 7,000 were eel eggs? Zero, exactly zero. So the scientists were like, okay, fine, we'll just track the adults instead. So they put GPS trackers on the eels, uh, and every single time, these slippery little guys managed to shake them loose. They have tried everything you can imagine. They have given hormones to females to see if it will attract males in Saragasso Sea doesn't work. They have uh, looked in the stomachs of predators to see if there are mature eels that have been chomped up and eaten in the Sargasso Sea. They've used microphones, they've used sonar, they've, I mean they've tried everything but nobody has ever seen any mature eel living or dead in the Sargasso Sea until now. Great video. However, not all eels go to the Gargasso Sea. There is a similar spot in the Pacific. Have y'all seen this going on in the UK? This is crazy, guys. So this is the story that I got that pretty much ignited this whole shit fire that's going on over there. Three children were brutally murdered by a migrant and the police did nothing. So half of the country erupted into mass riots. The migrants are also throwing acid and hitting people with hammers in counter protest. The police are overwhelmed. Now, this first video I'm about to show y'all is the counter protesters brandishing their weapons in public and celebrating in the streets. Look at this. And here's a video of the counter protesters moving through the streets. Ooh. This is crazy. And the crazy part is, is I haven't seen anything about the counter protesters getting any kind of punishment. It's the local citizens that are fighting back that are getting arrested and pretty much getting punished. And what's the new estimate of migrants in this country since Biden and Harris took over? 20 million? And I want to remind everyone, the reason this isn't happening in America right now is because of the Second Amendment and we have somewhat of a police force left. And I'm going to show you all another clip that is why these things are crucial to the survival of the citizens of this country. I'm fixing to show you a video of the police force being so overwhelmed over in the UK that they are bowing to these counter protesters. Why are you bowing? Every one of them has taken a knee. And I want to remind everyone, there was warnings about this shit happening. Let me show you a video clip from 2017. There will come a day that we will see far more radical extremists and terrorists coming out of Europe because of lack of decision making, trying to be politically correct, or assuming that they know the Middle East and they know Islam and they know the others far better than we do. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that's pure ignorance. You guys better wake up and gear up. People who are voting for Harris because she's a woman are going to bring this to the United States. This is why we can't have nice things. Famous YouTuber Mr. Beast has built a hundred houses for low-income people from countries of Jamaica, Colombia, and El Salvador. But the signature on those deeds had not even dried when some of these families are already putting up the houses that he built for them for sale. Mr. Beast went to El Salvador and he built houses for people that lived near a river that had become victims of floods. So he went and built them a brand new house. Not only did he build a house for them, but he also furnished the entire wow. house. But the moment a single mom got the keys to the house in El Salvador, she put it up for sale on Facebook Marketplace. 
The woman is selling the house on Facebook Marketplace for $45,000. And this is so typical of people from Latin America. I, for one, I hate it that I send boxes of things to Honduras. They end up selling them. They sell everything but their soul. So it doesn't shock me that this woman, as soon as she got the keys to the house that Mr. Beast built for her, is now trying to sell it. Because that's what they do. They sell everything. I just hope that she had a true emergency and is not selling the house just because. Because the ad that she places on Facebook Marketplace says that she wants cash and she wants serious buyers only. Either someone that has the cash in hand or that has someone living in the U.S. that can send the cash so that they can buy the house from her. And I know that what Mr. Beast did is a gift. He gave a house and it's her house. However, that's not the intention of him building the house for this woman. His intention was that she would not be homeless and that she, as a single mom, would have a roof over her head. I don't think that his intentions were to build her a house so she could turn around and sell it. I think it's not about the legality of it. It's her house. She can do whatever she wants. It's the morals. You know, Mr. Beast literally uh, built that house for her so she wouldn't be homeless. What is the one spy trick you would teach everyone that they can use to improve their life? The most important spy trick to change everything immediately is something called perception versus perspective. We all look at the world through our own perception. Um, my dad used to tell me, my stepdad used to tell me that perception is reality. And I, I, was, I was arguing this with him when I was 14 years old. I told you so, Dad, you're still wrong. But perception is your interpretation of the world around you. But it's unique only to you. There's no advantage in your perception. That's why so many people find themselves arguing all the time, trying to convince other people of their own perception. The way that you win any argument, the way that you get ahead in your career, the way that you outsell or outrace anybody is when you move off of perception and move into perspective. Perspective is the act or the art of observing the world from outside of yourself. When you shift places and get out of your own perception and into someone else's perspective, now you're thinking like them, which is giving you an informational advantage. But you know what they're all doing? Everyone else. So what would that look like in a conversation? Biggest South Korean YouTuber was hiding a secret. Her channel name is Ji Yang. She has over 10 million subscribers. She's a mukbanger, so she eats on camera for a living. One in every six South Koreans is subscribed to Ji Yang's YouTube channel because she has this way about her. She seems incredibly sweet. She has this bubbly, energetic energy where she seems to really savor every last bite of the food and she makes it very entertaining to watch her. It doesn't just seem like, wow, look at this person who can eat so much food. It seems warm. It seems like a companion. That's her image. She even recently collaborated with Gordon Ramsay and people just love her in South Korea. She's actually one of the most well-perceived influencers in South Korea, which is very difficult to pull off. But there was always something a little bit weird about Jiang and her YouTube videos. Some people noticed them and even commented on them years ago. Whenever Jiang wore short sleeves, she would have bruises up and down her arms. The bruises were large. I mean, they're big, purple. I would say that the bruises on her videos on her arm are maybe credit card shaped, if not larger. They're Whoa. large bruises. And she would just constantly say that she's always clumsy if she ever briefly addressed it. In some of her videos, she will have bandages on multiple fingers up and down her arms, but nobody suspected anything that sinister. They thought if she's going through something bad, let's say worst case scenario, what do bruises mean? Maybe you're getting hit. If she's going through that, there's no way that she would be able to smile so brightly on camera. That just doesn't make sense. But the truth is, she was being beat. Ji Young was forced into creating a mukbang channel, and when she wasn't filming, she was beaten twice Ooh. a day for years. A demon what? prayer at the RNC. RNC praying to demons? RNC opens with a prayer to a demon. Bro, they say knowledge is power, so let's talk about it. What was this blasphemous prayer by the Sikhi woman? Well, what is Sikhi? In the 1400s, a child was born by the name of Nanak. He was born in the Punjab region of India. 
everybody in this culture was either Muslim or Hindu. And this child was incredibly spiritual. As an example, when he went to school, everybody was learning the alphabet so that they could write their names. He mastered the alphabet in one day and wrote a poem regarding an attribute of God with every single letter of the alphabet. Within a short amount of time, the teacher was like, listen, I have nothing I can teach this kid. Everybody recognized he was special. At this time in Hindu culture, everything was dictated by the caste system. You had Brahmins at the top and you had the Sudras at the bottom. The sutra's job was to essentially serve the higher castes. Below the sutras, you had the untouchables. Nanak came from a Brahmin family. He was recognized for his religious potential. So there was a ceremony where they were gonna anoint him with this thread that would signify that he was one of the highest of the high Brahmin. Nanak rejected it. Stating a thread should not signify who a person is, but rather their attributes, the things that they've done, who they are. He spent his entire life teaching against and rejecting religious traditions or ritualistic worship, teaching people that rituals are not the way to connect. I'll give you two examples. One, he went to Mecca, he was praying in the wrong direction. People wanted to put him to death, they were freaking out. He simply asked, point me in the direction where God does not exist. On another instance, there was like a Hindu ritual where people were throwing water over their shoulders, trying to reach the heavens as a form of prayer. He was facing the other direction, threw it over the other shoulder. People were laughing at him. They're like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, my farmland a couple miles down the road, it needs water. Everyone's like, this guy's so dumb. That water's never gonna reach your farmland. To which Nanak said, well, if it's not gonna reach my farmland, why is that gonna reach God as a prayer? Everything Nanak was about was teaching true connection to the source. The foundations for the Sikhi faith came after an experience he had in his 30s where he was taken up to the courts of heaven for three days. People thought he was dead. He came back and he simply stated, there is no Hindu, there is no Muslim. On his hand, you see that symbol. It means Ekon Gar or the one true God. So is he saying, so is he saying there is only one God and he's the only one that knows it? This is the prayer he came back with. There's one God, his name is true. He is the creator without fear, without hate, omnipresent, free from birth and death, self-illuminating, realized through the grace of the true guru, meditate on his name for he was true when time began. He has been true since all the ages. He's still true and he will forever be. When he said there is no Muslim, there is no Hindu, he was talking about them as these paths. We have created these paths. There's many paths to connect with the source, but it all goes back to the one true God. True devotion and worship within Hinduism is worshiping the one true God. True devotion and worship within Islam is worshiping the one true God. True devotion and worship within Christianity is worshiping the same one true God. It's all connected. Dear Vaya Guru, our one true God. So again, when she says Wahe Guru, our one true God, she is not saying, hey, I'm right, everybody else is wrong. So Wa means this exclamation. Because within Sikhism, they have this humility where they understand God is so beyond comprehension. We can't even begin to think about what, who, how God is. So Wahe is this exclamation of wonder. Guru means from bringing dark to light enlightenment, if you will. Wahe Guru, the supreme teacher, the source of all knowledge, the source of everything. It is an exclamation of wonder and humility to this source, which again is the same source that the Sikhs believe that all of us are striving to connect with. Not a demon. To continuously state that this is about demons and demon worship is so spiritually ignorant because I can guarantee you all of these Christian experts haven't done an ounce of research on Sikhism. How would a spiritual teacher that fought against the religious establishments that were using religion to manipulate and control people through ritualistic practice, to keep people impoverished, to continually hurt them, how can that be about a demon? Oh, I'm not talking about Guru Nanak, by the way, who did all those things. I'm talking about Jesus, who fought against the religious establishment, teaching that that ritualistic practice is not needed to connect with the source. Why? Because God is within you. Uh, he you literally go. said, you are the kingdom of God. He literally prayed that we would be one as he and the Father no are age. one. Almost as if the Father is this source that we can connect with. Well, <laughs> that's weird. What else did Jesus teach? The children of God are distinguished from the children of the devil. Anyone who does not practice righteousness... I, this must be a misquote. It must say practice Christianity. Anyone who doesn't practice Christianity is not of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Oh, again, love other Christians. His message was about unity. He was known so far and wide that priests, the highest of the high, kings, they would all want to meet with him. And you know what they had to do? They had to share a meal with the lowest of the low, the untouchables. Because to Nanak, he understood that no one was above anybody else. Oh, by the way, in the caste system, it doesn't matter what caste you were born into. If you were a woman, you were essentially a sudra in the sense of you had the same responsibilities. Not to Guru Nanak. No, everybody was equal. 
sounds a lot like someone else's message in a different part of the world. Almost as if God communicates with all of his children no matter where they are. No, but God only loves certain people who look a certain way because they're his chosen people. And all his other creation, yeah, that's just children of the devil. They're just demons. I just don't understand how people can't see that this message about love, equality, bringing people together, sacrificing the ego, becoming more, has turned into a message about hate, separation, egotism, and spiritual elitism. Anyone who's spewing out hate like this literally thinks they're better than someone else. Calling another human being a demon or saying they're praying to a demon is so opposite of what Jesus taught. So I'm going to break it down super simply for everybody. Every great spiritual teacher has brought a message and they often talk about the oneness and equality of humankind. If you have feelings of love for everybody, even those you disagree with, and understand that we are all cut from the same cloth, you are on the right path. But if you use these teachings for divisiveness or separation, guess what? You're not on the right path. You're misunderstanding it. But no, people want fast food version cookie cutter salvation. You pull up, you say the right things, and now you're saved. You don't need to toil or work or do anything to become and overcome the darkness that's within you. You just need your fast food. Yeah, you're saved. You pick the right team. Good for you. It is it is so ignorant. And honestly, for me, it's so embarrassing as a Christian, no Christian? to even suggest that she was praying to a demon is so disgusting. Pull the scales from your eyes. You might learn a thing or two from them. You're a Christian, bro. You're being deceived. Jesus is the truth and the only way to God. Wow. You need to study more. When I say stay safe on these streets, stay safe. We were probably moments away from getting kidnapped, trafficked killed you name it so it's my first night in brussels and i decided to meet up with my friend for drinks and then after drinks we decided to go out to a club we took the metro there because it's super easy and convenient we realized we'd missed our stop so we got off the train to switch to the other platform but we noticed this man that was walking conveniently behind us he switched platform and got on the train going backwards with us and that's when we knew he was definitely following us when we get off the train he gets off we got on and off the train multiple times just to make sure and he followed us each time so we decided to come off at a train station to call for help and of course he followed us but at this point i'm actually kind of scared so my friend starts calling people to come pick us up but no one's answering because it's the middle of the night my friend is calling an uber and we just want to get out of there as soon as possible on top of that he's carrying this big black bag and i'm just thinking what on earth is in there that makes him so confident that he can take down two girls but where it gets really scary is when our uber finally came so we started walking out the train station and of course he's following us outside the train station there isn't that many people and there really isn't any room for us to make any mistakes at this point but we get outside and the uber's nowhere to be seen so we're just standing in the middle of this little bus station in the middle of the road and he's literally standing right behind us at this point my friend is on the phone to the uber driver because we can't locate him and the app is saying that he's here we're literally walking up and down this road and the man is still following us the uber finally came to the right spot and oh my gosh i have never been so excited and relieved to see and enter an uber in my life i really thought i was about to get taken make a scene why are you following us we don't know you draw attention to him in front of everybody you know each other yeah you do did you just get out of the car yeah, I did. You did? With one shoe on? You alright? You know her? No. No, I didn't think so. Man, why don't you leave people alone? You think people want, want you walking up on them while they're, while they're pumping no, gas? No, they don't. They don't. No, they don't. I can tell she don't like it. Why are you using the toy, mate? I don't think it matters. What does it matter? What tone I use? What tone I use? <laughs> you can hear it. What's your name? I'm not touching you. Well, I ask for a handshake. I'm not touching him. Okay. I know. He's pizza juice only. Leave strangers alone. Especially when they're out here plumbing gas. I will see it again. And you will see me again. If you want to. What would you like? What happened to your shoe, bro? What does it feel like? What does it feel like? You look like a whole, your broke ass homeless dude on the street. That's what you look like. Do it again. Do what? I can only imagine how relieved and grateful that woman is that this man was there to step in. Well done, sir. Yo, TikTok, do you know how easy it is to be manipulated and mind controlled from outside forces? If you don't, have a listen to this. Not much is happening. 
I'm going to do something magical to this pencil. I'm going to put a few extra electrons on it, like you did in high school. Now, what happens? Number one, when I have charged this piece of plastic by rubbing it through my hair, as you do with a hair comb during the day, we have made a field which you can measure if you have an instrument. Now, I'm going to do something else to you. I want the people from the first row back, I guess some of you even a little beyond the video camera are going to feel this. This works double blind. This is not suggestion. We're going to create a three to five hertz field as Hamer did at UCLA in 1965, and we're going to ask you how you feel. Now, we're going to produce a 9 hertz wave. A wave is a time-varying field, and I want those of you who are sensitive to tell me what you feel compared to the 3 to 5. Okay? You got it? I see several faces have lit up here. You felt that? Terrific. Yeah, the one, the one way made you feel slightly low. I felt the vibration of the soul. Yeah. The second one you did, I felt the energy charge throughout the whole body. Exactly. If you saw those previous slides, we have replicated here with very simple, do-it-yourself, verifiable on scientific instruments, waves and fields that have profound effect on biological systems. So we can go in and find out what restaurants are modifying your eating habits by giving you an adrenaline reaction, which normally produces fight or flight syndrome. If you paid $20 for a meal, you're not going to fight or run away. You're going to eat faster. If you eat faster, they're going to have more table turnover during a shift. This is being done. We found a number of these locations in Southern California that are doing this to us. Incidentally, they are connected with the family. They are Italian-owned. This technology has leaked down to the public. We hoped it would be a few years before this happened. In the 1980s, again, trying to actively manipulate the mood and brain waves of Homo sapiens. We first tried photic stimulus, flashing lights. We tried evoke potential from sound. We tried a number of things about which we do not talk in public. We finally developed a little device about this size that goes in your shirt pocket. I took it down. Now I'm telling on myself, but I hope the statute of limitations has run out. To a couple of the major tourist attractions in Southern California, where we would have an unlimited number of subjects, free, doesn't have to feed laboratory mice. We determined that we could alter the brain patterns of about 35% of the gross population up to a distance of around 20 to 30 feet. Instead of going through the door, they would run into the door jam. Instead of walking around the trash can, they would kick it over. They'd get lost. As soon as I found that this actually worked, and I used these to determine the waveforms, pulse repetition rates, etc., I destroyed the units because I felt we were doing a high, highly unethical thing. So I hired myself back to Washington and I said, hey, you guys, we've got a clear and present thing. Our mind and our thoughts are constantly being manipulated from outside sources. Question is, are you going to let it keep happening to you? And that's how they hit us, folks, in our biofield. Imagine 1965. Imagine the tech now. Hey guys, I'm here with Nelly, and I have my last loose tooth, and I'm gonna see if she'll pull it again. Ooh. <laughs> she got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good bird. Good job, Nell. 
how fun until she starts taking all your teeth when you sleep. Hey, so when's the last time you had like some real good street food like that, man? Oh man, it, it's been a minute. It's, it's been, been a minute. minute. Yeah. Oh yeah. Out of everything that they serve, man, what's your favorite right now? What? Oh, as far as the, the food, no, the food right here. What's what's your favorite right now on that tray, dog? Well, right now, it, it's got to be the baked beans right there. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. All uh, right. Baked beans, okra, brisket. I don't know what type of pastry this is, and mashed potatoes. What? Chocolate and liqueur. Chocolate and liqueur. Chocolate and liqueur is the pastry. Yeah, eclair. There you go. Right. What about you, G? What about you, though? What's your favorite thing on the tray, bro? What is it? It's okra right there? Yeah, it's okra. I'm about the okra. Hey, so how long, how long have you been incarcerated? And um, so what? You're on death row as well, correct? Yeah. The Lord is the final judge. There's no greater or better judge than the Almighty. Breaking news in the UK is this whole situation just got far crazier again today. I'm sure wherever you are in the world, you're very aware of the situation that is happening in England at the moment. Of course, following the tragic incident that happened last Monday in Southport, there has been a lot of protests and riots and other things happening all across the country. It's got so bad now the government says anybody partaking in these will see the full force of the law and we now know what that means. First of all, countries including India and Australia have given travel warnings to the UK saying don't go there. But today, this was published basically showing what the punishment is going to be for anybody partaking in these activities depending on what they did. So if you're involved in the rioting, you could get 10 years in jail, anything to do with violent disorder, five years, racial hatred, seven what? years, and criminal damage up to 10 years. So these are some pretty hefty punishments for being involved in any of this. And that is literally what they mean by you will see the full force of the law. The whole thing is out of hand and I can't believe we're actually living in a world where this is happening. Like it just doesn't look real. And honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen, but hit that follow button and I will keep you updated. The but government and police need to get their priorities right. It won't end well for them. They have abandoned their own people and they are pissed. It is wow. a one piece. Wow. Can you do a piece? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take a video. Oh, video is another, another Take Kodak. A picture, it's another Kodak moment. Another Kodak right. moment. So, 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 yeah, so this part has to de rotate underneath. So it's one, it's one piece. It's one so it's this the aorta, aorta candle? Yeah. That's nice. And then, We're amazing. Bro, the Our creator is amazing. They are a satanic gang sacrificing babies to the devil. MS-13 is one of the major gangs. And they are satanic. In this interview with Tucker Carlson, he's describing how this one gang member killed dozens of other rival gang members. And then his buddies tell him, all right, do the baby next. Keep in mind, it's a mass murderer that's saying, hold up, what are we doing here? The baby has nothing to do with this. And that's when his gang brothers tell him, the beast asked for a baby. Bro, these gangs were terrorizing the entire country of El Salvador. Every single time you step out of your house for anything, you're scared shitless for your life. Your kids can't walk or take the bus to school because you're scared that they might get attacked by gang members. The tortilla lady on the corner of the street can't sell tortillas without being taxed for protection. If you're walking down the street to the barbershop, hey bro, come over here, you need some protection. Just pay me a little fee. And if you don't pay up, you're getting sliced. Bro, again, when Bukele became president, he declared all out war on the terrorist gangs of El Salvador. The gangs deleted 87 random innocent people to basically stick it to the face of Nayib Bukele and tell him, we run the country, not you. These people did some absolutely monstrous things that we probably can't even talk about on TikTok. So satanic or non-satanic related crimes, they still did some horrific things that got them locked up into the largest new prison in Latin America. Comment and I'll break down the military strategy Bukele used to turn the most dangerous country in the world into the safest country in the West. I love what's happening now in El Salvador and wish my country could find a leader this brave, smart, strong and effective. I don't think people understand just how close we are to going home. We are living in the last seconds of the last days. We are watching the two major components of the tribulation. We are watching them be set up. The one world system, the mark of the beast. They have already been preparing people for that. We are watching that. We have been watching that. We are also now watching Ezekiel 38 prophecy get set up. The war against Israel, that's happening. That is about to happen. 
in our lifetime and we are watching it unfold. We are living in the last seconds, ladies and gentlemen, of the last days. And it is our job as Christians, as brothers and sisters in Christ, it is our job to share the gospel of Jesus. Because those that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, your friends and family, my friends and family who don't know Jesus will not go to heaven with us. And that is not okay. It is our job to share the truth. And it does not matter what they think about us. I'm ready, sis. Have you seen this video where Elvis literally shapeshifts after he kisses this little girl? From the Sioux Nation. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And just for reference, before I let you watch his entourage run over and try to hide him from the camera, his normal eyes, and what happened to his eyes after he kissed that little girl. Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Somebody get the scarf. We'll take her. Hide him. Hide him. Now, I don't think Elvis is a shape-shifting alien from outer space. Mm. Oh, no. I think he's something much different. I think Elvis is an angel. In fact, I think Elvis might be the angel, the angel of life, Lucifer that is, that fallen angel who just happened to be the minister of music in heaven before he was banished for wanting to be worshiped just like God. And if you're an angel and you're banished down to earth because of your pride and your ego and you just continue to want to be worshiped and you have the ability to take human form, what better way to continue to be worshipped than to be the most worshipped musician of all time. Because Lucifer doesn't appear to us as a devil with horns. No, he appears to us as an angel of light. And well, since we're talking about Lucifer, if you've seen any of my videos, well then you know by now that the Statue of Liberty is actually a representation of Lucifer. And have you ever looked even closer at the Statue of Liberty's face? Because to me, there is no denying the similarities in those two faces. And when I do my thing and line them up side by side, they seem to be an almost perfect match. And if we know this is Lucifer, and we know this is Lucifer, and this is the original face of the Statue of Liberty before they replaced it, well then, what are they trying to tell us? Because if you're a fallen angel here on Earth, banished from your heavenly abode, and all you want to do is get people to worship you instead of the heavenly father? Well, I haven't seen too many people more worshiped than him. And you know how they like to put the truth right in plain sight. And well, at a certain point, you're not going to be able to be worshiped like you want to be. So you jump ship. And what better ship to jump no, in than the ship on, that gets bro. worshiped more than anyone? And well, I already told you how they like to put things in plain sight. This is a post from the man himself. But you guys know this is all for entertainment purposes. You can't really think that I believe in shape-shifting fallen angels that take form of the people that humans worship because they want to be worshipped just like God. Entertainment purposes only, people. And if you guys like my post and you want to help support me and help me bring truth to you guys on a daily basis, consider hitting the subscription button and have an awesome day. This guy stretched further than Inspector Gadget. Hey, but anyway, uh, Alphys did have a song called Angel or Devil in Disguise. One of the two. This is the ghost market of watches and the assembly factory of the world's famous watches. Although it is assembled watch, but from the appearance of the workmanship Ooh. is absolutely not lost count of version. Sapphire glass, the original Swiss ETA movement to ensure that the watch function is stable and durable. Wow.
anyone notice that the color change at the start? The Pakistanis in London, they'll have all kinds of serious inbreeding problems because that's an even smaller sample size you're dealing with. Strap yourself in for this. 70% of all Pakistanis are inbred. And in Turkey, the amount is between 25 to 30%. More stillbirths among immigrants. A rough estimate reveals that close to half of everybody living in the Arab world is inbred. A large percentage of the parents said, this is blowing my mind. So listen to the BBC investigation in Britain several years ago revealed that at least 55% of the Pakistani community in Britain was married to a first no. cousin. Holy sh BBC's research also discovered that while British Pakistanis account for just 3.4% of all births in Britain, they accounted for 30% of all British children with recessive disorders and a higher rate of infant mortality. What in the f***? We make it illegal here to marry cousins in our country. Mm. So... The money is supposed to, all the money in the airplane is supposed to go to the Afghan International Bank and go to humanitarian aid. Well, a big chunk of the money comes off the airplane and goes other places and it has eight stops. So you ready for them? I'll just do the eight stops and then we'll talk through each of them because it'll be easier and maybe I'll remember it better. First stop, so this is the delivery weekly of U.S. dollars. It goes to the prime minister of the Taliban. So his name is Mo. Mohammed Hassan Akun, okay? The second delivery goes to my favorite person, the Deputy Prime Minister, Mullah Burader. The third delivery goes to the GDI, who I told you is um, Taliban CIA. It's run by um, um, Abdul Haq Wasik, if, if you remember, he was one of the ones released for Bergdahl. Um, so far, by the way, Mohammed, number one, Burader, and Wasik, these are all sanctioned designated terrorists. So all three of these deliveries are against U.S. and international law, by the way, okay? The next delivery goes to the Ministry of Interior, which I told you already is um, led by Sarajuddin Haqqani, and that's where all the passports are being made for terrorists. The fifth one, Siraj, Siraj is double dipping. Then they do a delivery to his house. So delivery number five goes to the home of Sarajuddin Haqqani, which should blow people's mind. This man sent 1,050 suicide bombers at U.S. and NATO troops. Over 1,000 suicide bombers were sent by him alone. And the U.S. is dropping cash off at his house weekly. Like, it's mind-blowing. Um, then, I'm almost like losing track where we are. The next delivery um, goes to uh, Hai Batula Akunzada, who's the head of the Taliban. The, 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 the next delivery goes to Saif al Adil, who is the, basically the, the head of Al-Qaeda's military commission. And then the last delivery goes to three people. But I think we wait, because if I do that one, we're going to have to talk about the first seven deliveries, if okay. that's okay. Okay. So we'll come back. Let's start, let's start with number one. Yeah. So number one, like I said, prime minister of the Taliban, uh, designated. He's an interesting fella. He is basically... So he got put in his role because they thought, hey, he's longtime Mullah Omar supporter. He will he will stay in line with the Taliban like he's the right person for the job. The interesting part is publicly he backs the head of the Taliban on everything privately, because during those 20 years we were fighting, he got very, very wealthy off Taliban funds and did a lot of investments in Pakistan. So he has like these natural leanings towards the Pakistanis because he has huge financial investments there. So he's kind of a little two-faced. He's playing the Taliban and playing Pakistan, right? So in case he needs the fallback location to Pakistan. And what a lot of people don't know is he's not going to be in his position long because Hyde Batula has been trying to move him out. He's trying to put his chief of staff there, but he has cancer. And so he's having to go to Pakistan for cancer treatments, as you can imagine, because 5 million people fled Afghanistan and who all fled the educated, the good doctors. So he has to go to Pakistan to get proper medical attention because he can't get in Afghanistan. Um, so that's basically our first delivery. Second delivery, like I told you, goes to Mullah Burader. Um, 
who we already talked about, right? Went to Iran, made this deal with the Iranians and Al-Qaeda to send Al-Qaeda guys to attack U.S. and Israeli troops. Huge violation of the Doha deal. Just, just the Iran, you know, just this Iran deal. Huge violation, right? There are so many violations of this Doha deal we have with the Taliban, and no one's negating it and keeps letting this money come. But even well before the fall of Kabul, there is a huge violation of the Doha deal. Like the Taliban detained um, an American name, Mark Frikes, right? And basically what happened is we had a special envoy before West who was just as bad as West, with his, um, Ross Wilson. And he knew the Taliban detained Mark and they downplayed it because they didn't want the, 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 this fake peace deal to go through. So like, no, it's not the Taliban. It's people trying to ruin peace. And they downplayed it, downplayed it, downplayed it. And then, of course, around the fall of Kabul is when we got Mark, like after we got Mark back after the fall, sorry, and we released him for the number one narco trafficker in Afghanistan that the Taliban were under, right? So the Taliban had him the whole time. Basically, the State Department lied and downplayed it to keep the Doha deal going. So just, so just let you know this. Can you explain the Doha deal real quick? Yeah. So everybody understands what that is? Yeah, honestly, I don't even understand the Doha deal. But yeah, Doha deal was essentially the U.S. brokered what they call a peace deal, but it's not. They brokered a deal only with the Taliban for the future of Afghanistan. And in this deal... Basically, they made all these promises. So what do the U.S. get in return for these payments? Perform the functions of my office conscientiously, <laughs> that's okay, and the best of my ability. <laughs> conscientiously. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I can relate to her. Sometimes it's hard for me to pronounce certain words. You know, English is my third language and my tongue doesn't roll like y'all. All right, folks, thank you for staying till the end. Be kind to each other. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And don't forget to like or dislike so I can make a better content. There's a free gift below. And if you want to buy me coffee or support me through Patreon, the links are in the description below. Have a prosperous day and God bless.